Look at this guy. What a square. Hello, my baby. Hello, my honey. Hello, my rag, my gal. Send me a kiss by water. Baby, my heart's on fire. So Mirthrise Deluxe's other than ironworks are finally turning up in stores. And with them comes Decepticon Airwave. In Generation 1, Airwave was a small micromaster plane, and his on-camera screen time in media was as long as this intro. Obviously this is no jet plane. The window on the front shows off the figure. The side panel art is exactly the same. Pictures of two modes are on the back, and some hints as to how you should interact this figure with the Micromasters. There's artwork on the side panel, which may or may not be what it would look like if Airwave was actually the Death Star. Let us now open Airwave and give him some air. Airwave is another weaponizer-style figure comprised of several components that can be assembled into several different configurations. As such, he comes with no accessories because he is nothing but a pile of accessories. But he does come with his instruction booklet, which comes with his stats. And his stats are 8, 7, 8, 5, 10, 9, and 9. And this is Airwave in his first alt mode. It's like an aircraft carrier, except that it has treads below. So it's land-based and not aquatic. Promo pics of Airwave have him looking almost white, but once you have him in hand, the colors are mostly light gray, with some black, some orange, and this blue section. He's not really elegant looking. Most of him is very linear and boxy, from pretty much every angle. There is plenty of sculpted detail to keep him from looking too flat, and the plastic is a nice hard plastic with crisp edges so the details aren't washed out. These silly plastic discs at the bottom of the tread means that he can roll on smooth surfaces, although it's not a very smooth ride. There are a number of open 5mm ports where you can plug in Titan Masters, Battle Masters, Micro Masters, and so forth, though there are only a couple of open Fire Blast ports. Turning him over shows some hollowness, but no obvious robot kibble. He certainly feels solid enough and holds together well once all of his parts are tabbed in properly. And of course, if you want to stretch your imagination quite a lot, you can imagine that the runways are long enough to accommodate the harrowing landing of MicroMaster-sized plane figures. As a weaponizer-style figure, Transforming Airwave is simply a matter of splitting him apart into all of his separate components. And once he has been torn asunder, you can rebuild him in several different ways. For one of the other official configurations, take the robot pelvis section and the robot chest section, with the orange pegs facing out, and these gray pegs coming down into these two holes. Peg and plug them securely together, and they will hold very firmly each of the aircraft landing sections. Pegs into these orange pegs through means of this hole at the back. Peg both of them together end to end to form one really long landing strip. They will be held up by means of these two tread sections at the ends. The robot arm sections peg beneath the tread sections. There's this little tab that sticks out from the back. It goes into a very small notch inside at the back of the tread. It pegs into this hole here. It can be easier to pop this section off, and then pop it back on, and force it into the tab. The same thing is done with the other arm section, it also has the same tabs which peg into the treads. Peg it underneath the landing strip. The orange arm sections are meant to brace it and help to keep it level. Take one of the gun accessories and peg it into the top. Then take this octagonal piece and jam it into the top of that gun. This forms the, uh, conning tower. And the last gun accessory plugs into the side. And this is Airwave's second alt mode, which is a lot like the first one. But the landing platforms splay off to the side rather than forwards and backwards. And the overall effect makes him look kind of like some kind of factory entrance. The stuff on the top could be smokestacks or a conning tower for an airport. The detail and the colors are unchanged, but it doesn't roll as easy since most of the wheels on the treads don't make contact due to the placement of the other parts. But two connecting ports have opened up at either end, which allows you to link other Earthrise figures like Ironworks, 
and gives him plenty of sprawl as an expandable playset. And the Open Battlemaster ports and pegs support a variety of accessory plugins. This configuration does come across as more stationary than vehicle. The arms jammed under the bed are the only things that don't quite work, but if you squint and don't look at him from the back, you can pretend they're not there. But wait, there's more. The instructions list a second official alt mode. Take the arm piece that has the front of the aircraft carrier section, flip it upside down, then use the connecting teeth to link them up so that these sections are pointing outwards, tilt these sections so that they are pointing down, then use these two pegs underneath to peg in the robot pelvis section that will keep them steady and hold them in place. Then disconnect both sections at the center, then take the robot chest piece and plug it into place underneath the treaded section. It has connecting teeth that will allow it to click together. Make sure that the treads are pointing up, and these pegs are also pointing up. Then these pegs and holes connect together. To reconnect the disconnected piece, the black octagon-shaped piece plugs into here, while each of the gun accessories plug into these pegs. Configure the arm section so that this hole is pointing backwards, this section is folded down, and this peg is facing backwards. Then the two pieces peg together, and the transformation is complete. And this is Airwave in its second crappier vehicle mode. I'm not sure if it's supposed to be a tank or some kind of gun platform, but it pretty much fails at both. If it's supposed to be a tank, the treads are upside down. Some of the connectors are still open, so you could plug him into Omega Supreme or Scorponok, except they'd probably be too embarrassed to be seen linked up with this mess. There are open pegs and ports for Battle Masters, Titan Masters, and other things. But adding more accessories to this just makes it look even messier. It doesn't even hold together all that well. The lower section is always tilting, and the arm on the back looks poorly contrived no matter how you rotate it or bend it. You can flip it over and it's just as convincing as a vehicle because the treads are at least in contact with the ground. Seriously, this configuration is just bad no matter how you look at it. You would probably do better using your own imagination to come up with your own vehicle ideas. So let's forget about that horrible configuration and do the robot mode instead. Fold the feet back into place, snap the tread section back on, then for each leg section fold this portion down at this hinge. You will know that you have the correct tread piece pegged in because it will line up with this peg that is inside the shin and this hole on the inside of the tread. Fold them until they line up. Then push them into place, and it will form one of the robot shins. Repeat for both sides. Take the pelvis section. The thighs actually peg into the pelvis piece. So untab them. You can see that there is a slot and a groove here that peg together. When transforming to the other alt modes, line those up and tab them into place. But for the robot mode, untab them, then swivel the legs down to form the robot hips. With the painted sections faced forwards, peg them into the thighs. Flip up Airwave's head from the robot chest section, and rotate it until it's facing forwards. Then use these pegs and ports to connect them. The front section of the aircraft carrier becomes one of the robot arms. Kind of untab this section and fold it up a little bit so that you can have the elbow bend. Then the arm just pegs into the side. Ditto with the other arm piece. It just pegs into the opposite side. Then you can connect the weapon pieces in any way that you wish. He has no robot fist on this arm, so just plug in the octagonal section. You can peg in the second one to make the gun even longer, or peg it in anywhere else that you like. And this is Airwave in his robot configuration. This one looks boxy as well, but there's a kind of rough elegance to it. He looks like he was made to take a pounding and laugh it off. The shins and chest are very rectangular, while the arms and thighs have a clanky mechanical look. The colors seem to mesh well, and the sculpted details lend the illusion of complication to his simple bulkiness. He's got good heft as a robot with no rattling. All of his limbs plug in solidly and hold firmly in place. The only hollow portions seem to be at the back of the shins, but they are still half filled in by the tread, so it's not too bad. And the head sculpt is pretty cool. 
A squat little noodle, well detailed and painted, with a single metallic eye. There seems to be a requirement among Decepticons that anyone with WAVE at the end of their name only gets one eye. And you guessed it, there are Battlemaster ports a go, go which you can use to arm up Airwave with Fire Blasts, Micromasters, Titan Masters, and all the other spare accessories you have. He's stable enough on his feet that you can lade him with plenty of weapons without worrying about him tipping over. He's missing his right hand, but he's meant to always have the arm cannon in place. Again, with similarity to Shockwave, you can peg in each of his weapon attachments separately, or you can combine them any way you like. They do configure into a one, two, or three gun part barrel. The articulation is standard deluxe, but since most of his parts are connected with pegs, you can get full rotation out of almost any joint. The head will rotate 360 degrees, but it's a tight fit with the way it budges up against the torso section. It will also lean backwards as part of the transformation. The arms are just pegged in, so they will rotate 360 degrees and fall out quite often. A little pressure will keep them in. This flap lifts up, which allows the arm to splay outwards. There is an elbow swivel, but if you have the elbow tilted up in any way, it will be blocked. So make sure that the arm is pointing straight down before you try to rotate it. The elbow will bend forwards and backwards about 90 degrees, and the other arm is set up pretty much the same. Again, since the chest just pegs into this section, you can pop it off, but leaving it pegged in will let it rotate 360 degrees. Each hip at the pelvis joint has a hinge and swivel combination. So each leg will kick fully forwards and backwards, as well as splaying out fully. Once the treads bump into the chest section, the rotation stops, of course. But he does have a separate upper thigh swivel that is hampered by this tread section. The legs also disconnect at the knee, so you can rotate those 360 degrees. And the tread peg connector will allow the shin to rotate backwards. And you will note that the shins pop out pretty easily. You may want to cinch them up with some floor polish. And of course there is the now familiar Siege Earthrise patented side ankle tilt. So in spite of his bulkiness and his boxiness, you can get a decent amount of posing out of Airwave with patience and perseverance. For size comparison, here is Earthrise Deluxe Airwave, next to Transformers Animated Activator Soundwave. Here is Earthrise Deluxe Airwave, next to Masterpiece Decepticon Shockwave. And here is Earthrise Deluxe Airwave, next to a Sine Wave. <laughs> Earthrise Airwave is a figure that may be desirable for its versatility as much as anything else. The modular gimmick means a lot of parts forming, but it also means that you're not boxed into only two or even three modes. Positives are that Airwave has an angular and unique look to him, which is cool, no matter what other people may be saying to the contrary. He has lots of sculpted detailing, the colors are not too bright, he has a rough industrial style appearance. He has Battlemaster compatibility and three official alt modes to play around with. He could be connected to other Earthrise figures as part of a playset, and you can get a lot of playability for the price. Negatives are that if you don't like parts forming, you're out of luck. This figure forces you to do it and like it. His bulk does sometimes hinder the robot articulation, and I can picture some of the peg joints becoming loose and floppy with repeated use. Some may find his robot mode a little too boxy and simple to the eye, and at least one of the alt modes is a total disaster, not even worth bothering with. The robot chins are half hollow, and some of the Battlemaster ports are in places non-intuitive. But there's plenty to like with this figure, and I give Earthrise Deluxe Airwave a solid 8 out of 10 deaths. You can even use the Titan's Return Broadside Mini Aerial Bot accessories with the Aircraft Carrier Mode. I'm sure they're to scale. If you refuse me, honey, you lose me, then you'll be left alone, old baby. Tell the boy, and tell me I'm your own.